if there's just one keyboard shortcut with individual resolve that everyone needs to change, it's this. This allows you to do simple cuts, these awesome ripple cuts both forwards and backwards, and the essential undo without moving your left hand. That makes cutting your videos together much easier and much quicker. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set that up. I'm also going to explain the keyboard customization screen in just a little bit more detail. And I'm going to show you a bunch of my other favorite essential beginner friendly keyboard shortcuts for DaVinci Resolve. Mm. But first, I need to thank this video sponsor, Audio. Audio is a music subscription service that has all of the music and sound effects that you could need. And they have options for everyone. If it's a monthly subscription you need, you can get started with their creator's license, which is available for just $14.99 a month. If you need everything they have to offer, why not go for the annual pro license, which you can get for just 59 bucks for your first year. Or if it's only music you need, you can get lifetime access to the entire audio music library for just a one-off payment of 199 bucks. Bargain. Check the links down below. Right, let's kick things off with the basics, the absolute essential keyboard shortcuts you need to know to get working in DaVinci Resolve. And the very first one, super quick and simple, the space bar. The space bar will allow you to simply play and pause on your timeline like so. Now the left and right arrow keys allow you to scrub through your timeline one frame at a time. So you can keep tapping it like so to go forwards with the right arrow key or backwards with the left, or you can hold them down to scrub through like so. The up and down arrow keys allow you to jump between your edit points really quickly. So you can just whip through your timeline really quickly like so. Up will jump backwards on the timeline while down will jump forwards. Alternatively, there's the J, K and L keys. Now imagine that this little button here is J, this one here is K and this one here is L. So if I hit the L key, it's simply going to play forward. If we hit K, it's going to stop. And if we hit J, it's going to play backwards. Now the joy of this, if we hit J once again, it's now going to play back at 2x speed. Hit it again, 4x, 8x, 16 and 32. You can also play forwards and backwards in slow motion. If we hold down the K button, which is this stop, and then hold down L as well, we can then play forwards the timeline at 0.5 speed. If we hold K and then hold J, we can play backwards at 0.5 speed. Now, if we give a piece of footage a click, let's go with this one here, and then we use the full stop and comma keys, we can actually shift this footage forwards and backwards on the timeline by just a single frame. It's a real nice, easy way of doing real fine adjustments. Now, it's worth noting that works on edit points as well. So if I move my mouse over this edit point until my cursor looks like this and then give it a click, then we can use the comma and the full stop once again to move this edit point forwards and back to get it in the exact right position. Control and S, by the way, does a real quick save. DaVinci Resolve is pretty good at saving your work automatically, but it's good to know. And there you have the basics to play forwards and back and scrub through your timeline effectively just using the keyboard. Now, the next one I want to talk about is the Alt key, which is option if you're on a Mac. I can't talk about keyboard shortcuts within DaVinci Resolve without talking about this key because it is pretty magic. And the first example is this. If I grab some footage from a media pool, bring it onto my timeline, you can see there is both video and audio. However, if we hold down the Alt key, click it from within the media pool and then drag down, you can see that we only get the video, which is just a handy way of bringing in the video only without the audio. Now you can do the opposite of that by holding Shift, grabbing your footage, bringing it in, and then you're only gonna select the audio and not the video. Bonus tip, I brought this footage in and it's just the video without the audio, but I've later decided I do want the audio. You can actually get it really quickly by using the F key, which is called match frame. So I'm going to give this footage a click on my timeline so that it's highlighted. And then we're going to hit the F key and it's going to find this exact point within the main source video from my media pool. And it's going to mark these little in and out points to say this is the section you need. And then if I just click on my preview window and drag down, I can get the entire thing. So that's the video and the audio. Or if we use the same keyboard shortcuts as before, so I hold Alt and drag, we can bring in just the video, or hold Shift and drag, and we can just bring down the audio. If you've 
just brought down the audio, you can then highlight them both on the timeline, right click, and then go to Link Clips. And now they're linked once again and ready to go. Now going back to my favorite Alt key, these are obviously linked, so if I move the audio, the video will come with it. However, if we hold down the Alt key and then click on the video, we can select them independently. So then I can just move the video without moving the audio. This timer will actually show you how far they are apart, what the difference is between them. But they are actually still linked. So then if I give this a click without holding down the Alt key, we can still move them together like so. But if we hold Alt, click, and then drag, we can move them independently to get them however we want them. If we hold down the Alt key, click on this video, and then keep the Alt key held down, we can then duplicate things. So I can duplicate this video as many times as I like just by clicking and dragging and keeping the Alt key held. That's a really useful one to copy videos, audio, transitions, effects, pictures, pretty much anything on the timeline you can duplicate by holding Alt, clicking and dragging. Winner. And the very last Alt key one I want to show you is simply by holding the Alt key and then scrolling your mouse wheel, you can zoom in and out of the timeline, which is super handy to get a better look at the timeline and then zooming into the detail you're looking at. There's also another bonus tip here. If you zoom into whatever point you like, so I'm gonna go with something like this because I'm doing some fine adjustments, let's say, but I want to look at my timeline as a whole. If we hold Shift and hit Z, we can see the entire timeline and then Shift and Z once again, and then we can jump back to that point we were before. And this will remember whatever zoom level you're at. So if I zoom out a little bit, let's go with this. We'll Shift Z, see everything, Shift Z, we're back to this point. Zoom right in, Shift Z, Shift Z, and job done. Now the Z key is also super useful for looking at your preview window up here. So if I use my mouse scroll wheel, I can zoom in and zoom out. And if I click my wheel in, I can move this around. So it's really handy to be able to look in at some fine details within the preview window. To get that back to exactly as it was, simply hit the Z key and it'll just reset that. So no matter what I do, I can hit Z to get back to where I was. Simple. That was a lot, I know, but the Alt key is super useful and being able to zoom in and out, reset your preview and have a look at the timeline from different levels are all super useful and hopefully they're not too difficult to remember. Next up, I want to show you some simple shortcuts for doing cuts and then deleting clips and deleting spaces on your timeline with something called the ripple delete. And then we're gonna get into customizing our keyboard shortcuts with this super handy one I hinted at at the beginning. So the default keyboard shortcut to do razors or splits or cuts or whatever you wanna call it is Control and B. So if I just put my playhead wherever I want the cut to happen and I'll hit Control and B, it'll do a big cut through the timeline like so. Now it's important to note, let me just duplicate this using my Alt and drag. If we don't have anything selected, so none of the clips are highlighted in red, we'll do a Control and B, it will cut through the entire timeline. So it's kind of slicing all the way through. If we select the footage first, so this one is highlighted in red, and then we do a Control B, it's only gonna make the cut on that one particular clip we had selected and not the entire timeline. Now, if you want to delete a clip, you just give it a click and then we hit the backspace key, which is the delete key on a Mac, the one at the top right-hand corner of your keyboard. And that's just gonna delete the clip like so. On this one, we're gonna do the exact same thing, backspace, and it's gonna delete that like so. But it leaves a big gap. So that is what's called the standard delete. Now let me just undo with Control and Z, another handy shortcut. If we wanted to delete this clip and automatically close this gap, so bringing everything from the right-hand side over to the left, on Windows, you'd use the delete key rather than the backspace key. And if you're on a Mac, you would do shift and delete, and that will just delete that and close that gap. Now it's also worth mentioning, if I just did a standard delete on this and I had this empty space here, you can actually click on the empty space and it will highlight it in this light gray. And then I can hit delete or ripple delete to delete that and close that gap. Super quick word of warning when doing ripple deletes with multiple tracks. So I've got two tracks set up here. If I was to give this clip a click and then do a ripple delete, it's also gonna affect things on the other tracks. It's gonna shift everything over to the left, which can mess up your edits. Two quick ways to resolve this. You can either click on these little padlocks on the left-hand side, so I'm gonna lock these two, so then they're not affected by anything at all. If I was to give this a click and then ripple delete, you can see these locked tracks will stay exactly as they are. 
The downside, because they're locked, I can't actually click and do anything on them at all until we unlock them by clicking on the padlocks once again. Alternatively, what you can do is turn off this auto track selector. So we're gonna give those a click. Now we can still actually do any edits. We can still do what we want with these clips, but any ripple deletes won't affect those tracks. So there's two ways to prevent it. I just wanted to let you know that that can happen. Easy. So that's your simple cut, delete, and ripple delete. But you can actually combine the entire process into one single keyboard shortcut. Well, technically two. It's called the ripple end to playhead and ripple start to playhead. And the shortcuts are control shift open bracket and control shift close bracket, which is kind of fiddly, which is why we're gonna reassign them in a moment. But let me show you how it works. So we've already got an edit point here. I've already done a little cut. And if we move our playhead over to this point here, let's say we want to make a cut and then also ripple delete this section. So rather than doing a cut, a click, and then a delete, which does work, we're gonna combine the entire process into one. Now it's control shift and then the open bracket or the close bracket. You use the open bracket, which is obviously on the left, if you wanna to close to the left, and you use the close bracket, which is the one to the right, if you wanna to close to the right of the playhead. So in this instance, we wanna do a cut and we wanna to close to the left. So we're gonna do control, shift, and then the open bracket, and it's just gonna close that gap. So it's gonna go from wherever the playhead is to the previous edit point. If we wanted to do it the other way, so let's move our playhead right over here, and we want to make a cut here, and then delete this entire section up to this edit point. We go into the right of the playhead, so we would do control, shift, close bracket, the one on the right, and it'd close that gap for us like so. But as mentioned, it's kind of fiddly. You've got fingers all over the place. It's not particularly useful. So we're gonna reassign those. Now, there are a few different ways to do this. Some people prefer to use like QWNE or ASD. My personal preference is one, two, and three. So one will close to the left of the playhead. Number two is just a simple cut right down the middle. And number three will close to the right of the playhead. And it just makes life way, way easier. I also really like using one, two, three because the tilde key, which is the one to the left of the number one, top left of your keyboard, that's the undo key as well. So you can do control Z to undo, or you can use the tilde key. I think it's called tilde or tilde, something like that. Same location on Mac, but there's no tilde. I have no idea what these symbols are, but you know, it's that one. Hit that one up there. So basically you've got undo with your little finger, one, two, and three. So you can do real fast cuts and closes and undos with your four fingers. Now, quick warning, the one, two, and three keys currently are assigned to multicams. Again, I don't really do multicams, which is why I go for this option. If you do loads of multicams, you may need to reassign them to something else. But I'm gonna show you how I do it because that's how I do it. <laughs> so let's have a look. So anywhere within DaVinci Resolve, all you do, click on DaVinci Resolve top left hand corner and then click on keyboard customization and the keyboard customization window will appear. Now, super quick tour of this screen. You've got presets in the top right hand corner so you can just pick and choose those. We'll come back to those in a moment. Then you've got this virtual keyboard so you can either click on the keys on screen. So if I click on U, it's gonna show me what U does within this active key area. So you can see the individual panels on the left, you can see application, the U does edit point type. On the right, you've got a big list of all of the individual commands and the different pages. If we click on this edit point type, it's gonna actually jump to that exact area so then we could reassign that if we wanted to. Alternatively, by the way, rather than clicking on this virtual keyboard, you can just hold the keys down on your own physical keyboard. On the left, you've also got these modifier keys. So if you wanted shift to be held down, you wanna see what shift and T is, you can just click those, shift and T is add audio only transition. And that's kind of how this screen works. So we need to start to reassign some stuff. So the first one, control, I'm gonna hit control with my modifier and hit B. That is of course razor, which does our splits. So we're gonna click on razor and it's gonna automatically jump to Razor, and you can see it's Control-B. I do want to keep the Control-B keyboard shortcut, but I want to add a second one. So we're just gonna click on the little plus. It's gonna give us a red box, and then I'm gonna hit the number two key, and it's gonna say, number two is already assigned to clip, multicam, cut to angle. Do you wanna assign this keystroke? I'm just gonna click Assign, simple. Next one we want is obviously Control-Shift, and then it's this open bracket, 
which is start to playhead. We'll give that a click. It's gonna jump to the right area here. Control shift, I don't actually need that anymore. So rather than assigning an additional keyboard shortcut, we're just gonna click the X to get rid of that one. And then we've got a little red box. This is obviously the one to the left, so we're gonna hit number one. It's gonna give us a warning once again. I'll just click assign. And then enter playhead is just above. We'll get rid of that one. Click in the box, number three, assign, and job done. Now, we do have some overlaps, which is why we've got these exclamation points. If we click on the exclamation point, it will actually show us what the overlap is. So you can see here, it starts a playhead and cut to angle one. To get rid of those, just to tidy it up, I'm gonna to go to my cut to angle one, two, and three. Again, I don't use these often, so I'm actually just gonna get rid of them. You could reassign them if you wanted to, or you could use a different keyboard shortcut. Whatever you wanna do, I just wanna show you how this works for me. Then we're simply gonna hit save. We have to give this a name, so I'm just gonna call this one, two, three, and then click OK. Now, just before you close the screen, if you click on these presets again in the top right-hand corner, you can see DaVinci Resolve is still there, so that default one still exists. It's really easy to jump back to if you need to. But we go to one, two, three. We've got our start to playhead. Everything is all assigned. Perfect, we'll hit save. Now, just with my left hand, I can hit number two to make these cuts. This is a perfect example. There's loads of empty space here, so we're gonna go right to the end. Hit number one. It's gonna close that gap for us. And if we went over to this point here, I wanna make a cut here and get rid of this point. We can hit number three. Actually, I've changed my mind. We'll use my pinky finger to do an undo and an undo. And you can just use your left hand, tilde, one, two, and three, to really quickly do cuts, closing down this timeline to edit much, much quicker. Left hand on those numbers, and then you can use the right hand either on your mouse, some people like to click through the timeline, or you can use your right hand on the J, K, and L keys to really quickly scrub through your timeline. It's a really, really efficient way to edit. Or alternatively, you could buy either one of these. This is the Blackmagic Speed Editor, and this is the Blackmagic Full Editor's Keyboard. If you want to know more about these, Stick around, because we're going to be doing a comparison on the channel very, very soon. I hope this video was useful. I hope you found good stuff within this here presentation. I don't know. But thanks ever so much for watching. Take it easy. I'll catch you next time.